What's up guys, this is Zoe here. I'm gonna show you how to do your offline conversion tracking for Google Ads so that way you can tell Google Ads the customers that actually convert into paying customers rather than people who just sign up for your website form fill or give you a phone call. That way Google Ads is getting actual good information to use in their automated bidding strategies rather than people who are just calling to get information or spam callers or spam form fill. So what is Google Ads offline tracking and how exactly does it work? Well, to demonstrate that, we're gonna show you the whole process of a Google Ads conversion action and the process of a click all the way up until someone actually fills out the form. So let's say, for example, you're a pest control company over here in Katy. I'm in Houston, Katy's pretty big, and let's say, for example, I have a bug problem, right? So I go over here and I go on Katy Pest Control, and then I click this ad over here. I go over here and here I am on the ad. So this is where I'm gonna take a pause for a bit. The way Google Ads offline conversion tracking works is that whenever you go and click on an ad, typically over here where you see in the UTM where I'm hovering my mouse, there's this little braid, this little amount of random code called a GCLID. Now what exactly is a GCLID? So what a GCLID really is, is kind of like a fingerprint that Google Ads uses for attributing conversions back from the campaign level all the way to the ad group, to the ad keyword. Um, it's just basically an attribution um, code that Google Ads uses to help out within the automated bidding strategies that most Google Ads advertisers are doing. So like, let's say for example, I go over here and I actually give them a call or I go over here and I actually fill out their form fill or schedule a free termite inspection. They're gonna get a notification within their CRM like, oh, you've got a new lead. And let's say they're using Zoho, let's say they're using HubSpot, let's say they're using CallRail, I don't know what they're using, but whatever they're using, this GCLID or that was on there from the original URL, that's probably what's gonna show on there, um, their CRM is going to be um, embedded in their CRM, um, their CRM uh, properties. So whenever that is there, Google Ads can tell the advertiser and the system itself that this was for sure a Google Ads conversion, and this is how it was converted, and that's and how and why. Now, how exactly do you set this up for your business so that way you're tracking these qualified conversions and these actual sales instead of your website form fills or phone calls? Number one, once you go over here on your account, you're going to want to navigate all the way to your goals. Once you click on goals, you're going to want to go right over here where it says create a conversion action, right? You click on create a conversion action. You go over here and you click on conversions offline and then add a data source. And then right over here, you're gonna want to click on connect a new data source, right? You click on connect a new data source, and for the purposes of this example, I'm gonna show you how to do this with HubSpot. So whenever you're at this step, it's going to prompt you to connect your CRM, whether it be Zoho, CallRail, um, HubSpot like I'm using. Um, nine times out of 10, it's gonna have a direct integration with Google Ads, so it shouldn't be too difficult. But if it is difficult, then you can probably use Zapier. Zapier is very easy to use, and there's probably some documentation. Um, and if you want that documentation, just leave it in the comments below, and I can help you out in finding that um, to connect your Google Ads into some smaller CRMs. But that's besides the point, what do you do next? So you go over here, and then you're on your conversions offline, and you can see over here, I have my HubSpot set up, so you go ahead and click Save and Continue. And then over here, you're gonna wanna find what exactly you wanna measure. Now, this is offline conversion tracking, so we wanna measure people who were, who came from their um, uh, phone calls or their form fills, things of that nature. If you are if you have another way, you can also upload that. But you wanna make sure that for this purpose in offline conversion tracking, they're just converted leads. So you go over here and you click on converted lead. And then this is where it gets easier. So you give it a minute and you go over here and click on contacts. It's gonna show up in just about a second here. There you go. And then there you go. And then you want to make sure that your life cycle stage is selected is probably the only one that's going to show up. And then you want to make sure that it is selected to customer. And then you go over here and click on next. There you go. And then right here, you can map fields from the contacts. Now from here, it's actually pretty simple because Google Ads is actually already doing it for me. 
Sometimes it won't map the fields correctly from the Google Ads field to the source field, but right now it's doing a pretty good job at it. So let's review this. Right here, what we were talking about from the beginning, the Google Ad Click ID or the GCL ID is mapping to the GCL ID field in Google Ads. Email is hashing from a hashed email in HubSpot. Phone number, you get the gist. But what's really important here is that if you have a custom field in HubSpot, you have a custom field in Zoho or CallRail or what converts, whatever you may have, you want to make sure that that custom field that has conversion value or that field has conversion value is mapped correctly. That's the whole purpose of this. We want to make sure that Google Ads is getting the right deal value or the closed deal value from your CRM being pushed into Google Ads. So right here, we can see that weighted deal amount is being mapped to Google Ads field. And in my purposes, or in my example, I don't have any custom um, properties, so I don't have to worry about that. So we can confirm everything is good here. You go over here and click on Next and then everything is completely fine. You can set up your schedule to whenever you want to. Let's say, for example, some, uh, some leads take longer than others, so you can edit your schedule and run it on your time zone or run it at 12 p.m. From my experience, I run it at the end of the day, at around like 5 p.m. Central, and you can change the connection to contacts or qualified leads or this or that, whatever suits you and whatever makes it easier for you. So it's about as simple as that. And then once you have everything mapped correctly, go ahead and click finish. Give it a minute. And then there you go. You go ahead and click save and continue. And then you go ahead and click finish over here. And from there, you are done. Now the question becomes, how do you use this offline conversion tracking setup to better benefit your Google Ads account and really give you that extra boost of qualified leads and most of all, give you leads that actually convert into customers? So here's how you're going to want to do that in your campaign. Now let's say, for example, you have a search campaign running and that search campaign is giving you about say 60% quality conversions and 40% of those conversions are spam or better yet, they're just unqualified. So they're wasting your time. You want to get rid of them. Let's say usually most of the time you have these uh, campaigns running at a max conversions with a TCPA of $78. Your average conversion is typically around a thousand, two thousand bucks. It's doing well, but you want it to do better. So with this offline conversion tracking setup, you're now throwing your deal value to Google. So that means you can use a different bidding strategy such as maximize conversion value, right? Because you have that deal value parsing every day at 5 p.m., 12 p.m., whatever um, time that you've set it to pass, um, it can now use this to its advantage so that way it knows that, hey, um, Mike who filled out a form fill um, but only turned into a $200 job for you, doesn't mean much to you because you're not really breaking even or hell you're probably losing money on that conversion. But um, Jim over here actually got a $2,000 job for you at a $50 cost per conversion and he's giving you like this uh, 10x ROAS. So with this bidding strategy, you're able to tell Google who is a more quality conversion and on top of that, you're going to get more quality conversions while preventing those spam leads, preventing those unqualified or just the lower quality conversions that you see. So uh, a bit of advice whenever you're setting up this bidding strategy of max conversion value, set it to your break even ROAS. And because you probably haven't set this up before, you want to set it to a lower uh, to your ROAS, like 150 percent, maybe even 120 percent to start. But then once you start seeing that ROAS hit its numbers, increase it by 15 to 20 percent. And then you will see more qualified leads and you will see your account performing just a lot more better for you. So that's basically how you do Google Ads offline conversion tracking in a nutshell. This is really like a superpower if you know how to use it right with the right bidding strategies and the right campaign strategies. Of course, there's a lot more to it, but you'll catch that in my later videos. Feel free to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I'll get to any of your questions as quick as possible. And if you have any specific questions, reach out to me using the link in the description below.